Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. So we're officially two weeks into spring here in New Zealand, literally spring, so just two weeks out of winter. We're in mid-September. I don't normally manage to upload an episode so quickly, but this one feels important because I'm seeing a lot of shorn sheep out there and have been seeing multiple cases over the last few weeks where this results in death. So I consider this an urgent call to all those planning to share their sheep. Please understand why you're doing it and when to do it. It all comes from good intentions, but let's just get some education circling and try and stop these cases from snowballing. So why do we share in winter? Well, there are reasons, there's definitely benefits and lots of people do do this to keep lice burdens low. So those external parasites, um, they thrive during winter. That's a wintertime issue and they won't thrive on short wool because the lice get cold. So that's one reason people do it. Um, we can also see it help heavily pregnant ewes that are carrying multiple lambs, twins or triplets coming into spring. We can see heavier lamb birth weights as well from those twins and triplets, which obviously will give them a better chance of survival as well. And the third reason is that it just kind of keeps the wool better quality, which to be honest is not a reason really here in New Zealand unless you're sharing for high value fibre, um, but wool is hardly a big money maker these days and really doesn't apply much on lifestyle blocks. So why are we seeing these deaths if it's, if it's something that is acceptable to do? Winter sharing is very stressful on anyone who's not well conditioned, anyone who does not have ample feed supply, who does not have good shelter, good shelter. If you are going to do a winter share, you need to share them, and this is really key, you need to share them between days 50 and 100 of pregnancy, right? So normal gestation in the sheep is about 150 days, give or take a few. If you do it too early, they may lose the pregnancy from stress, but mum will still be fine, you'll just see less lambs being born. The big issue is doing it too late. Guys, you cannot go out and whack a heavy fleece off a mum in late pregnancy in the wet and the cold and expect her to deal okay with that. If you do do a winter share, her feed requirements are gonna go up by up to 30% just to stay warm. Now take into account here that 70% of that lamb growth inside her is gonna occur in the last six weeks of pregnancy. It really skyrockets how big those lambs are getting right at the end. And her energy requirements are already gonna increase depending how many she's carrying. So by about 25% if she's carrying one, her requirements will go up by 35% if she's carrying twins and about 45% if she's carrying triplets. That's a massive ask. And then another 30% on top of that, just to stay warm. You can see how this adds a lot of stress. Any pregnant woman can testify to how difficult it is to fit enough food into your stomach while you're heavily pregnant. Every bite of food is a decision between eating or breathing. And it's no different with sheep. Because of this, they are already at very high risk of going down with a starvation syndrome called pregnancy ketosis. Check out more in this episode here if you wanna know more about that. But it's essentially a state of starvation from not being able to get the energy requirements she needs to maintain those lambs. We cannot be sharing a heavily pregnant ewe and expecting her and her lambs to survive. As a rule, we say don't do anything stressful to them in the last four weeks of pregnancy. The risks of stress are just too high. Give them their vaccination boosters four to six weeks out from the planned start of lambing. Set stock them on your good quality grass that will last them through lambing, then back off. Now what people do do at this time, so four to six weeks out from lambing, is called a crutch and dag. And this is where we, sh we do share them, but just around the bum and under the udder. And the point of this is to keep the back end clean and clear and to clear away any muddy wool from over that udder so that the lambs can find the teat easily. But this is not a full body share and it's certainly not done in the last four to six weeks of pregnancy. We do it that far out, set stock them, leave them alone. Guys, if you're going to share during winter, they need to be in good condition. It needs to be done before 100 days gestation. Remember, sheep pregnancy lasts for 147, 150 days-ish. So those last six weeks, give her the vaccination booster, which will pass through her milk to protect the lambs. Consider just a crutch and dag at this time. Then introduce your grain slowly over the last four to six weeks to help her with her energy requirements. Good grass, leave her alone. If you feel like you do want to do a winter shear, make sure it's before 100 days of pregnancy, she needs good food, plenty of lush grass. If she'll eat grains, give her grains the week before and for a week after. 
Remember to always introduce grains slowly, no sudden increase of grains that can give her a tummy upset. But that big tummy filled with hay and grass is actually going to produce heat from the inside out through the fermentation process. So kind of underfloor heating from the inside of the animal. She will need good shelter, that's an absolute must. Good shelter for the week following shearing. If you need ideas on how to create good shelter, follow this episode up here. A tree is not going to be enough. She needs to be able to get out of the wind and the rain. That chill factor can be really intense. And please guys, watch the weather forecast. Plan it for when it looks like we have a nice long spell of good weather. It's gonna take her about five to seven days to acclimatize, okay? Finally, if you're gonna do a winter shear, stagger the shearing so that we don't have the whole flock at risk at once. Now, on the flip side of lambing guys, so let's imagine that they've already had those lambs, please don't be shearing them when they have young lambs on them. Remember these girls have adjusted to wearing a heavy wool coat throughout winter and you're wanting to go out and strip her naked in a breastfeeding mother with a newborn, right? And I know that I'm using human terms there, but I feel like people sometimes forget what we're dealing with. Keep in mind as well that her milk supply is peaking in that first six weeks after lambing. She's already struggling to keep those lambs fed, throwing a ton of energy and protein straight into that milk. Stripping her naked in the cold and wet during this time may well end up with a hypothermic, deceased mother, followed shortly by the lambs. Or a mother who survives at best, but her milk supply dries up, so she still loses the lamb who starves to death. And then guys, the only other thing I would urge you to consider, just in terms of timing, is that we're wanting that summer shear, the one that you do in summertime, to line up well with the start of the fly strike high risk season. So up here in Auckland, that's gonna be sort of November, December, and we want that to line up because when you do this summer shear, that's also the time to apply your fly strike prevention product. There are a few to choose from, but most of them tend to be applied after shearing when the wool is nice and short and oily to distribute across the body and last the full length of time on the label. Ideally protection up to about three months, but make sure you check the label for what to expect. If you're sharing them too early, it's just gonna get a bit messy. It's maybe gonna end up more labor intensive than necessary. You'll need top up fly strike treatments. You might see breakthrough disease, even though you've, you have applied that product, but it's not lasting as long as it should. So just consider that it's just a logistics thing. So just to reiterate, there are production benefits to a winter share if that's what your goals are. Just make sure you do it for the right reasons, guys and watch that she has food, shelter, do it at the right time, watch the weather forecast, don't end up with another casualty with mass deaths on your hands. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there. If you haven't already, subscribe, thumbs up and comment to let me know what's working and what's not on the episodes. Any suggestions for topics are always welcome. I'll see you for the next one, bye bye.